Hi everyone. This morning I'm going to show you how to calculate the depreciation of fixed assets. And to do that, I'm using the activity that, or activities 1A and 1B, which you find at the end of your PowerPoint notes. Activity 1A involves Dawson Enterprises. And we see by looking at the, the information provided that Dawson Enterprises purchased a machine for $22,000 on the 1st of January 2005. That machine had an expected useful life, otherwise known as economic life, of four years and a salvage value at the end of that time of $2,000. The salvage value, just note, is basically our estimate of what we can get for that machine on the open market if we sell it at the end of four years. Part A of that question involves using straight line depreciation and I've actually already written out the um, solution for part A so you can see it down here. The formula for straight line depreciation is, um, I hope you can remember, cost price, that is the price that we paid for the machine, not including GST, less the estimated salvage value at the end of its useful life. And we divide that by the number of years of useful life. So this figure is in years. It can be otherwise if you've specified it that way. So the useful life that we're using is in years. The cost price of the machine that was purchased by Dawson Enterprises was $22,000 and the salvage value was $2,000. The years of useful life, four years. It's not exactly rocket science, this particular calculation. So we can very quickly work out that 20,000 20, divided by four is $5,000 per year. So that's the amount of the expense that we would charge at the end of each year. The actual general journal entry we would make to achieve that, I've just written in at the end of the space here, which is for each year, we'll debit depreciation expense, an amount of $5,000, and we will credit accumulated depreciation, $5,000. Our narration would be something like annual depreciation of machine. Before anyone asks me the obvious question, um, I'm assuming here that it's a financial year ending the 31st of December for the sake of convenience. Um, if that was not the case, if it was the financial year ending the 30th of June, the amount that we've calculated here is for 12 months, so we would have to divide this by two in that first year to give us 2,500 for a six month period. So our entry would then be to debit depreciation expense for the year ending 30th of June 05 or the six months ending and we'd credit accumulated depreciation 2500 if we don't have a full year.